Hey folks, Dan Frio here with your real estate update for December 5th, 2023. So mortgage rates, they took a little bit of an uptick yesterday and I'm gonna go over the economic data that really caused that. But you're, we're starting to see more and more and more cracks in the foundation of the economy. And that's why you're starting to see rates come down. But on the area of home values, now I, I try my darndest to not talk about home values, but it still drives me nuts how you have people out there still predicting now a 2024 crash. So what you're probably going to see, what you're probably going to see in the next couple months are a lot of these people now that they've seen that 2021 didn't crash and 2022 didn't crash and now 2023 didn't crash and now they're going to go to 2024. So if you're out there still watching them, you might be a little skeptical or what they're going to do is probably most likely start to change their tune. And, and here's why. Let's get over to where home values are for 2023. Right here, CoreLogic just came out and this is basically the, the overall study of housing and home prices once again increased. 4.7% in 2023 from October of 2022 to October of 2023. So if you're still on those bandwagons of the housing market's going to crash, well, maybe some areas might, okay? Maybe you have like Austin, Texas or Southern California or areas like that that had rampant appreciation or, you know, because of a homeless problem and, and things like that in California, there's a lot of studies on that, on why many areas of those areas are starting to crash in values. But if you look at everything over the over a broad scheme, over the whole mapping system of the US, values on average are up 4.7%. So we haven't seen a crash in the last three years, even with rates going to 8%, the housing market was still, I won't say great, but values were staying steady. Then here's what causes a crash. I don't care what kind of product you have. If you have too many hamburgers, you have too many cars, you have too many widgets. If you have way too many of things that people don't really want to buy, it causes the prices to come down. Okay. So the opposite of that is if you really don't have that many items for sale, such as we have in housing, because so many people have rates at four or 5% or lower that don't really want to trade in that rate to buy another house, even if it's cheaper at an 8% rate. So have a higher payment on a smaller house. Doesn't make much sense. Those people are, are just sitting on the sidelines. So you don't have a ton of product in the market. Now, could that change? Well, foreclosures aren't there because home equity is basically at an all time high for, for homes. So you're not going to see foreclosures hitting the market. So the only thing that could really kind of increase the volume or inc increase the number of properties for sale is construction. And so we follow the construction and construction permits and things like that to give you an idea how many properties are coming to the market. And is that too much that'll flood the market and cause the price to decline? Whew, that's my rant for this morning. So without further ado, let's get over to the economic data that we have for today. That's going to show us basically where interest rates are going to go to make maybe housing because house prices are up. Maybe this on interest rates can make housing a little more affordable. So yesterday I didn't go over this, but yesterday we had some huge cracks in the foundation. And, and here's what those are. On Monday, you're going to see right through here, factory orders. The previous reading was 2.8. It was now negative 3.6. Huge move a huge move. So let's go. That was yesterday's data. It didn't really hit the headlines too much, but let's look at today's data. So on that side, we go over to the here. The only thing we're really interested in this number right now is the Jolt Index. This is going to tell us how many job openings there are. Hasn't been posted yet, but I'm trying to get my videos out for you guys first thing in the morning so you, you kind of understand what's going on here. So uh, this number, I'm not expecting it to be kind of way out of whack that should throw the market you know, on its ear. So we're probably going to, let's just say that's kind of probably be coming in kind of in line with expectations. And now here's where we start really seeing the numbers that the Federal Reserve is going to monitor. On Wednesday, we have the ADP employment numbers. Federal Reserve is watching the ADP numbers because they want to know how many people are getting new jobs. And their thinking behind this is, and I say it every day and I sound like a broken record, but they don't want more and more people going back to work because if you go back to work or you get a new job and you're making money, you're going to spend that money on stuff and it's going to cause inflation to go up. So that's that. On Thursday, we have the initial jobless claims. Federal Reserve, like I said on this, it's the opposite. They want more and more people losing their jobs. So if this number goes up, it's kudos for the Fed. It's bad news for me and you, but it's kudos for the Fed because most likely the Fed will pivot a little bit earlier than expected. They're expected to probably in about March or April to pivot, meaning they're going to start reducing interest rates. 
I'm kind of on that sentiment as well. I don't know. I, I don't think they're going to do anything. They're not going to do anything in December. They're probably not going to do anything in January. February would be the teetering point where it's like, okay, do we have enough data now, now finally, to have the Federal Reserve kind of pivot and start reducing rates? So that's what we're going to watch. And then on Friday, we have the employment numbers as well. Average hourly earnings. This is another area where the Federal Reserve monitors in, in detail. How much are people earning? Are they earning more? a lot more or just even. So if you're earning a lot more, it means you're probably going to spend a lot more and thus inflation is going to go up. Okay. So that's that part of it. And then the unemployment rate, where's it going to be? Is it going to tick up? They're hoping that the number gets to 4%. I, I kind of, I'm, I'm on the edge on that one because we have a lot of banks, financial institutions, a lot of companies going in and saying they're laying off people, even meta and companies like that in the, in the tech sphere are laying off a lot of people. So is it enough to uptick this to 4%? Only time is good. So based on this information, what's going on in the bond market? So we go over to this screen right here. This is what I have as a mortgage advisor. So my name is Dan Free. I do this report every day. If you're out there and you're looking to try to get a mortgage to maybe buy a house, buy your first investment property, refinance, pull out some equity to pay off some bills, I'd love to help you. Okay, and I'll give you my information at the end of this video. So what we have right now is what we monitor here is right here. We don't watch the 10 year treasury. We kind of watch it, but we know we pay most attention to this right here, the MBS. What is it? Well, it's a mortgage backed security. It's a mortgage bond that trades on wall street because rates, interest rates aren't controlled or mortgage rates aren't controlled by the fed. It's controlled by this bond right here. So we watch what the momentum is of this bond. Okay. So what you're seeing here is the price of the bond. All you need to know is this, and I say it every day. So again, I feel like a broken record, but for those new out there, what you need to understand is this number right here. If the number or the price of the bond goes up, what, you, what you're seeing is you're going to see yields or interest rates go down. Okay. So if you look at this over the last, let's say five days, it's up, up and away, especially over the last month. Over the last month, we've seen almost a one full percent reduction in rates. So look at this. We started down here and it ended up way up here. So that means the bond prices are up and rates are coming down, coming down dramatically. So again, my name is Dan Frio. I do this report on a daily basis. If you're out there, let me, let me say this. If you're out there and you've already locked in a rate, let's say you're locked in a rate two weeks ago, the rate's close to 8%. And you're like, okay, now what do I do? I'd love to read for you to reach out to us. Here's what we do. I just added this little link up here not too long ago. And what this is for is if you got a loan estimate. Now, what a loan estimate is, is if you applied at a, at a bank or a credit union or a mortgage company and you got pre-qualified, they have to send you out a package. And in that package is going to be a whole bunch of things. It's probably going to be about 50 pages. And part of that is going to be what's called the loan estimate. It's going to be three pages. It's going to give us the, the address of the property, the purchase price of the property, how much you're financing, the interest rate, and all the fees. We want to see that. Okay. The reason we want to see that is we're going to analyze that with over 60 of the country's largest banks and mortgage companies to see if we can get you a better deal because I'm a mortgage advisor. I work at Allied First Bank. Okay. So I'm, I'm federally licensed, meaning I can help anyone in the whole country as well as Puerto Rico. But we're also one of the country's largest mortgage brokerages, meaning I can use up to 60 other banks and mortgage companies and credit unions on our list, and I can offer their products and their rates Okay. So if you're not already applied and you're thinking, okay, can I maybe qualify now? My market, I still see my market. It's the prices are ticking up. They're not coming down. Rates are coming back down a little bit. Might make things a little more affordable for me that I might be able to buy. Well, if you want to kick the tires and see if you can qualify, don't disqualify yourself. Easiest way to do that is click the apply now button right up over there. Or you can scroll down to the bottom of our website, which is the rateupdate.com. You're going to see a bunch of things here, which blogs and different mortgage programs that we offer, mortgage calculators. And then at the bottom of the screen, you're going to see how to get in contact with us. There it is right there. You can give us a call at 844-775-5626, or you can email me directly. That is my email, and I will be the one personally re uh, responding back to you. So thanks so much for uh, watching, guys. If you have any questions, please put them down in the description below because if you read my descriptions or you read down below, I answer a lot of those questions or get back with you with some comments to maybe help educate you guys a little further when it comes to home. Thanks so much for watching. God bless. I'll see you tomorrow, folks.